Welcome to Comic Book Wednesdays, a weekly series where we talk about comic books. We're your hosts. I'm Ian. Howdy, I'm Al. How's it going? I'm Shane. And if you enjoy our content, please uh, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, interact with us. Uh, this week we are reading a couple different issues here. We got a uh, Avengers. We got Avengers uh, 13, New Avengers 17, and Avengers 14. And again, all of these books are leading towards Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars. Um, so how do you guys feel about jumping between two different stories or two different books through the course of one week? Honestly, it felt more cohesive for me. I really enjoyed that. Also, uh, I thought it was cool. Um, it's a little bit of back and forth on the app, which I'm still not real great at navigating. But it's yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I like seeing how cohesive this two, two books kind of come together. Um, and we're definitely starting to see that. I mean, cause like, what was it? And last week, Tony was like, what, light years away. And now mm -hmm. when we get to new Avengers seven, we actually see where Tony's at. Like he's on his spaceship talking with Mr. Fantastic, which I thought was neat, uh, to yeah. get that kind of like parallel and like getting uh, kind of like a whole rounded picture um, but before we jump to new avengers uh, let's talk a little bit about avengers uh, number 13 where we kind of get the continuation of these like um well, what would you call the children like zebra native american <laughs> children like, yeah something like that <laughs> the zebra people yeah and we kind of um, see, like, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I, all right, I was going to say, like, we just kind of see, like, where they go with the high evolutionary, what, why he took them, what was the purpose. Um, and you have thoughts, Al, you want to share? For me, I, I'm really enjoying the uh, the depth of knowledge we're getting on Hyperion. I think he's becoming a really cool character. I don't know how much farther we're going to go into him, but... Uh, him taking on these children and like trying to show them the way and you know like with the high evolutionary stealing them and him like taking it so personally it was pretty cool and then like at the end of the episode him and Thor are drinking from a flask I don't know if it's alcohol or not but it was kind of cool to see them having a moment you know yeah, I mean, knowing that's Thor, right. it probably is alcohol. But... <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, and like, so the whole the whole thing with High Evolutionary, he was trying to power this ancient like um, construct called Terminus, and like, I did a little background reading on him because they don't really describe him all that much, and like, essentially, like he. He was a part of another story where, like, he was this, like, all-powerful being that, like, was destroyed. And, like, it was from a while ago, like. And so, like, I'm sure, like, hardcore fans seeing Terminus come back, they were like, oh, that's really neat because we haven't seen him in ages, you know. Right. And so. Uh... I can tell you what it reminded me of because I had no context as to who Terminus was. Um. The 90s X-Men cartoon Juggernaut was what I immediately thought of when I saw this thing. It's okay. funny it's funny you say that because I was getting Sentinel vibes, you know? Yeah, that's what I was thinking <laughs> with Sentinel. So I'm not, when this thing popped up, I was like, you are familiar, but I know that you're not the correct familiar that I'm thinking. Right. Yeah. I was like, honestly, I was like, I don't know who the hell this is. This is supposed to mean something to me, but I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> giant robot chonky thing that's yeah what i got and then i was like oh well like hyperion just flew through your skull so i guess i guess you're not really a threat okay all right see well, you I later mean, he was gonna be before with thor charging <laughs> up his lightning attack and becoming a huge power source for him but you know true 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 i, I don't know it's just like Whenever you have, like, a character that can just, like, fly through someone's skull and rip out its powers, or you're like, oh, you're done. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think there's anything else really of note from that issue. I mean, like, it's kind of like wrapping up the story we had from last week, you know? Right. Yeah, definitely. I did like seeing how angry Hyperion was when he ripped that dude's arm clean off. Oh, yay! Dude, he ripped it right off! I forgot about that! <laughs> like, that just absolute fuck. no chill, walked right up to him, pop right off yeah, yeah he... and then the arm grows right back and he shoots hyperion in the face i was like holy shit <laughs> it was like villain monologue blah 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 give me your arm bitch like <laughs> uh we got well, we to got... be fair he did try and turn the zebra people into double a batteries i know i'm putting that over simplistic but that's basically what happened all right we gotta move we got uh people on us i'm sorry sure. um, okay. cool. no but they, no that's exactly like what happened like they just turn these kids into batteries and like Shit. uh but uh, you know yeah uh, i'll be honest he didn't really like pose much of a threat once hyperion figured out what he did it was just like oh got us wow they just blew you guys straight up uh yeah I don't want to pick up your body, dang. All right, I'm gonna save your body then. Um, but yeah, no. They, and then you kind of get this feeling like Hyperion wants to be the father of these, which is kind of neat, you know. Like he's he's really growing as a character, and I have the feeling that we're gonna like see him in the MCU a bit. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, that'll definitely be cool. Uh... Hopefully they they do him justice, you know, Henry Cavill being his. That's the rumor, self. right? Yeah, that's 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 what it sounds like it's gonna be. You know, if that's that's true, who knows? But it could be anybody really. But he would be a good choice for it, considering he already plays Superman. So. Right, and like. And from what I know is like Hyperion's like Superman, but he's edgier. Sometimes yeah. even portrayed as a villain. Alright, I'm off guys, I got my piece. Trying to get one. Okay. Trying to get one too. There's freaking wagons in the way. Oh my um, is dead. Awesome. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see Hyperion come up. And, like, I think the rumor right now is he's going to show up in Loki. I mean, like, we really don't know if that's going to be the case or not. Of course, there's nothing official. But if you're going to believe mm. the leaks and stuff, that's what it is. Yeah. Now, do you mind uh, if I ask a character question? Because there's sure. one thing with Hyperion that, I, like I said, comic book knowledge is limited as we've kind of gone over. I know that in the marvel universe movies we've gotten teased for like adam warlock and things like that yeah. have we gotten teased at all for hyperion or do no. we just know this from your know, rumors and castings and things like that we haven't uh, been le yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure it's just rumors and castings and stuff like that right now yeah exactly okay um yeah so i mean what we'll probably see is uh if they bring hyperion in they'll probably do the whole squadron supreme which is basically just like a justice league spoof like all the characters that you would think of in the justice league are um in the squadron supreme just their like marvel counterparts um mm -hmm. i forget like the batman equivalent i think it's like <laughs> i want to say night owl but i know that's like a watchman thing so that's not it but like it's something like that you know like um so yeah, maybe we'll see that one day. I mean, who knows? But I mean, we'll... some people believe that the, another Superman clone is on its way in Century. And Century is more like neurotic, like almost psychotic. So we'll right. see if we see Century. Um... Hmm. Well, I'm definitely curious. I mean, it does seem to be going in a new way, and like seeing how angry Hyperion was, like, drinking with Thor, like you had mentioned, Al, it's... Or, Ian, one of you guys mentioned that, I'm sorry. No. Um, it really opens up the depth of the character. 
I want to see more of that interaction because just as he wants to teach the kids, I also feel like Thor is teaching him. Yeah, definitely. He's like trying. He's almost getting a little bit of more life experience from Thor. Mm hmm. No, totally. Um, so it's cool to see that, right? I mean, like we already know Thor as a character, so getting getting that uh, more character experience in the comic books that's always nice. Um, now, speaking of character moments, I kind of want to segue a bit here because I feel like New sure. Avengers, New Avengers Seven was full of character moments. Um, I mean, that was a good issue. Oh yeah, totally. I mean. We get a little update on what all of the Illuminati are doing in a conversation between um, Reed Richards and Tony Stark. Um, and as we mentioned, Tony Stark is on a spaceship. And I think this is during his time with the um, Guardians of the Galaxy. And that's what Tony is doing. There's like a small run where he's um, out in space with the Guardians. And you can only imagine like the success... <laughs> The ego between him and Star Lord alone. Right, exactly. I mean, we we saw a little bit of it in the movie, right? I mean, when he got to interact with him, um, I wonder how much of that was like inspired by this, or how much of the Guardian success inspired them putting Iron Man in space to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting to think about. Yeah. Um, so. Moving on to the third book, what was uh, what was everybody's point of view on that? Let me see. I'm gonna have to pull that up here in a second because um, I, I had a image pulled up from the second book that was um, yeah, really it kind of threw me off in a weird way. Yeah, I have some things about the second book I want to talk about still, but we can go to the third if you want to jump oh, no, to go it ahead. now. I I was uh, under the thought that we were past that book, but go ahead. No, um, I think we just kind of grazed it honestly i mean we have the whole um namor and um uh, t'challa talking about like refugees that were killed Fuck. from the fight with the atlanteans that that whole scene was really interesting to me because you did have one of them saying like let's go for peace and yeah namor coming in and trying to get uh black panther to choose peace over keeping the war going. I mean, I don't think he has any success with that, but... Well, like, I think T'Challa wants peace, right? T'Challa realizes the bigger picture, and he wants to be able to bring the nations together because he realizes they're stronger together. Yeah. However, Shuri is in charge of Wakanda at this point, so, like, they have to... He has to convince her which isn't going to happen. So that's what at least T'Challa is saying, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and T'Challa really doesn't want peace with Namor. He, I mean, he already told him, I'm going to kill you kill myself. Him. Yeah. Which I don't, I mean, maybe I have a jaded view because, you know, superheroes are supposed to be, in my opinion, not like murderers and shit like that. But it seems like Black Panther almost... I don't want to see him go that far, you know, like almost like you don't want to see Batman kill Joker, even though you, you wish he would. You don't want to see Batman do it. You know what I mean? Have they always been like this arch enemy type deal? Because that always been a thing between those two. I think they're, they're both rival nations, right? So like mm -hmm. it's more than just Namor and Black Panther don't like each other. It's it's more that. Uh, their nations are rivals and there has been conflicts and they're going to do whatever is possible to stand up for their nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, with Shuri being the queen, I honestly thought that she was going to listen to Black Panther about, like, retaining this peace. But when she chose war, I kind of got this feeling like, okay, she's the queen and he's showing her this respect but also at the same time, one of them is listening to this while the other one is definitely going off of what is the best, like what is the best thing, best thing for our people. 
And I really feel like that echoed between how the two of them acted in that scene. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Um, I think what's interesting is T'Challa is willing to, you know, put his differences aside, not only for the people of Wakanda, but for the whole world. Like I, like I said, he sees the bigger picture. Um, and he goes to, he goes to read and he's like, like, Reed, what should I do at this? And he, at this point, and Reed's and, like, the choice is obvious. Like, yes. <laughs> you know. Reed's like, are you really like here asking me this? You know the answer to this already. Right. And I like the whole conversation there because, like, they kind of, like they even say something about you know like how the roles have reversed. You know, like Reed is a he's not about violence and then black panther is and he's asking for reed's help and reed's like you know we've kind of already switched positions in this this mm -hmm. world that we're in you know what i mean like it was kind of a cool interaction it's definitely a really cool interaction and i think one one that's kind of depressing when you think about it because it's like dude you you gotta give up on this fight for your country there's bigger things at stake here. And then that segues into them talking about the bombs they're building. Um, yeah. And the bombs they're building to destroy these other Earths that are like a threat during the incursions. Um, and they're like, do you think we have enough? And it's really stuck out in my mind. And they're like, uh, enough for infinite Earths? No, there's nowhere near enough. Like, there's never going to be enough. So it's almost like what they're doing is completely <laughs> useless. Yeah. You know, like you can prepare as much as you, you can, but like, are you really ever prepared to try to destroy an infinite amount of earths in order to protect yours? Even if you manage to do it, eventually the universe is going to end anyway. So you're basically just stalling for time. And like, will it like will it pay off? Are are you willing to get your hands dirty enough to try to save your world? And then what happens when you fail? You 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 manage to kill like billions, trillions of people, and fail anyway. Just to fail. Mm -hmm. So it just it really stuck out of my mind. And of course, I mean, also at this comic, we we see a cool interaction between Doom and um. Uh, Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic and Doctor Strange. Yeah. And, I, <laughs> Doctor and his Strange, son, right? Yes. Uh, Christoph, I think is yeah, his Christoph, name. Doom's son. So. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Doom and, Doom and Strange have this like mutual understanding for each other. There's a comic book that where um, Doctor Strange helps Doctor Doom go to hell and fight Mephisto. To, to get Dr. Doom's mother's soul free from the Festo. Interesting. Um, so I think there's he just always... does it to help him? I, I don't know exactly the, the details because I haven't read it. I just know the comic exists. But like I know there's this just mutual uh, common understanding between the two of them where like it's, it's like a respect, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it almost seems like Kristoff and Doom have are aligned in some ideals, but like completely off in different. You know, like Kristoff think... doesn't seem like he wants to go the same route as his father as being Doom. You know what I mean? But doesn't feel... want to turn his back on his father. No, so I feel like if your father was Doctor Doom, there'd be this level of like respect you have for him, but also a level of disdain because he's Doctor Doom and like he probably treats you like shit, you know? Yeah, definitely. I I don't know much about Kristoff, but like I can only imagine that like if you were Doctor Doom's son, your life wouldn't be all that great. Yeah. That also play, and that really plays into the moment with all of them sitting down to like, just kind of have a meal and talk, which really threw me off. But like, this, like the tone of, 
we're all powerful. Here's this mutual respect of all of us sitting there and sharing information. And it almost gave me the idea that like Kristoff was trying to be the one that was like the peace broker. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. And I you see can that. see that Reed and Doom are just like, Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and, like it's funny the dynamic between Reed and Doom and like if you just watch the movies and you don't really know much about the comic co- counterparts, you're like, these guys are enemies. However, I think it's diff- it's a different relationship. They're not enemies, they're rivals. You know? Yeah. They don't necessarily like they're not going to fight each other harm to each other, but want to have more power than the other. Essentially. Like I feel like doom would kill Mr. Fantastic given the chance, if it's going to bring him power, but he's not just going to do it because he hates him. There's always right. a, a motive, something that brings things forward, which is like, I feel like why doom is so compelling. Like he's not a basic villain. Like he's got complex ideas and thoughts behind mm-hmm. him. He's always written so well, uh, which is I'm really looking unlike for. you were saying. You you don't get that context in in the movies. Like he just they don't portray nah. him that way. Mm-mm. All I'm saying is like Doom better be the best. Like they need to perfectly nail his casting for the MCU. I I don't want to see Doom one and done. Like he needs to be the next Loki, for lack of a better word. You know, like. I want to see him over the span of several movies having this agenda that like always adjusts and changed and you almost root for him because he's this like redeemable but yet at the same time not caring. You're like I want I want you to think that Doom's helping you out and then at the end of the movie you have this like oh shit he just the end credit scene just twisted it on your head, and now the next movie you see Doom and he's like doing something else, you know? Like, yeah, I, I need that. Um, he can't be an obvious villain right away, and that's one of the just as a little bit of a side tangent with the two. So I've I've seen the two Fantastic Four movies, like regular one and then Rise of the Silver Surfer, which I I've always been a fan of. I think that they were done pretty well for the time. And then there's Fan Four Stick, which is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I can agree. And with I refuse that. to call it its original name. It is Fan Four Stick <laughs> because it sucks that bad. <laughs> and each movie set up Doom like you knew Doom was on screen because here's this cocky asshole, and you know it's the villain of some sort. Like Dan, that's a big ass fish. Doom is better than you. <laughs> Doom wants you to believe that he's better than you, but I want, as a viewer, I want them to make me believe that Doom is better than me. I want to be like, oh yeah, this guy is the shit. Like, <laughs> I, I just want that feeling. Like, I want to, I want to root for this guy, but hate that I'm rooting for him. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. to me, that's the perfect Doctor Doom. Like. And I hope they get there. I uh, He honestly has the potential to be the best character in the MCU, hands down. And they just got to cast him right and write him right. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm a little worried at the moment because I've um, – I, just side tangent real quick. I don't know if you all heard, but the director for Blade left the project and Blade was supposed to start filming like next month or the month after. I, have so, I did see that, yeah. So, like, things are now delayed indefinitely, and, like, Mahershala Ali is getting upset because he's like, well, what the hell, man? I, y'all, y'all announced me as part of this movie, like, back in 2019. Like, what's going on? Like, why aren't right. we moving forward? And the, the rumor out there is that Feige is spread way too thin, and he's not having the oversight he used to, which is causing issues like this – Another rumor is that the reason the director for Blade is getting removed from the project is that the script was awful. It had like no action sequences in it. It was just not well written. And then I'm I think what happened was like once Feige got his hands on it, he was like, "This is what I was trusting you to do this, and this is shit." So like we're we're starting over, and supposedly the script might have to be rewritten completely, wow. which is. Of course, Damn. all just rumors at this point, but like, 
if that's even remotely true, I'm I'm unhappy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so to go back to it with Doom is like I I really want to see them do him justice, but if that means Feige has to stop putting out like three shows and four movies a year, go back to what it was before. Yeah, I, think... I would definitely rather see quality movies over four shows a year. You know, for, like... yeah, like at this point, let's just let's go back to what it was because it wasn't broken, so there's no need to fix it. You know, it was yeah. working. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going back. Once you unleash this can of worms, there's no going backwards, you know? Oh, yeah, no. Definitely not. But uh, that is my side tangent. I, I wanna, You want to move on to the third book now, or do you guys want to still talk about the second? No, absolutely. Oh, we can move on. Okay, so uh, the third book feels like a, almost like an accumulation of everything that we've been building up to in this Avengers storyline, which is really neat. We're seeing these... these uh, sites the origin bomb locations they're, they're starting to come alive uh, i'm curious to think what you guys thought so the the one origin location um i forget what if it was i think it was the healing one the the, the creatures in that kind of reminded me of the um adaptoids like they aims like at, aims yeah, adaptoids aims, aims adaptoids they like adapt that, that was pretty cool um seeing a character like that i don't know how you know how much that's going to relate to anything but it was that's what my first take on those characters were but and then i didn't quite i mean some of the other locations like the uh, the communication location, it kind of gives you a hard like. It's hard to understand what they're doing, in my opinion. I agree with that. I think that's fair. I think it it's a little all over the place. You got multiple uh, locations going, um, and honestly, if I have any criticisms of uh, Hickman. It's that like he kind of spreads himself all over the place, and you have a hard time following what he's doing because there's just so many things going on. Right. Yeah, that third comic I did have a little trouble with, you know, just because, like you said, there is so much going on, and it's it is hard to to keep track of it all. Being a yeah. new comic book reader, I think if I was going to bring certain things out of that book and like what was the main takeaway from that book it was to me um the sites are activating uh, we have a very unhappy egg in our future a very unhappy egg like yeah that like the aim site that they had that seventh location they're um essentially like that's hatching what is that there like what's that gonna be um right so like our so the world is sentient and all these things are communicating with each other um this is the purpose to hatch this thing is this thing that's going to hatch be the um the sentience of the earth that's kind of what i'm asking myself at this point i wasn't i wasn't sure i was happy to see that like when when that issue started and they showed um the brain in like the the previous um, previous image, I was really happy because I was like, okay, I knew they were gonna go back to this. This was always a piece of something bigger. And then like throughout the entire thing, it was like, okay, message not received or message failed. Right. And then all of a sudden, it said message received. I was like, oh, what changed? And then you have the aim people who are like, oh yeah, I was just messing with this thing and I think I fixed it. And I was like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. And what did the you one touch? Fish, like you completely messed up. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like you oh, never pushed the big red button. Gone fucked up, a a Ron. Yeah, no, that was really interesting. I'm definitely excited to see 
what that is, because I have no comprehension as to what that even could be. <laughs> right. right. Like, it's all over the place. Like, I really like how cohesive it's, I mean, the story has been. I mean, honestly. Like, Definitely get... switching between issues, that was... I liked that more because I felt like I was getting all of the pieces. Where, like, if you're just sticking to Avengers or New Avengers, you're going to be missing some context, but, like, jumping in between them felt really nice. Oh, totally. I mean, if we were only reading one of these, we'd be like, well, what are we missing? Because, like, and it's going to be even more so I, as we go down the line, as we get closer and closer to Secret Wars. Both of these books are very important. Um, well, you said there's a third book that we're going to be jumping into as well, right? Well, so yes, sort of. So there are there are two event books before Secret Wars. First being Infinity, <laughs> and then the other is Original Sin. And I I was kind of on the um, the I was teetering on the fence here. I wasn't sure if I wanted Original Sin to be read or not. However, Original Sin really changes the status quo of the Avengers. I mean, um, certain things like Thor, it, it's what brings um, the mighty Thor into the comics because um, Thor becomes unworthy. Um, it's There's other things. I think Iron Man becomes severely affected by things as well. Um, and I think we see the superior Iron Man come out of that. I don't quote me on that one, but like you really see these like different changes to the, the characters. And it was like at this point when Marvel started changing um, some of their big name characters to kind of shake up the comic book industry a little bit, you know, make some sales. Um, right. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely like, I'm sure that we need to, we don't need to read it, but it'll add more to it. You'll get it more of a like. So we're going to. Uh, but they're the event books. Um, but other than that, it's really just Avengers and New Avengers. So we're, okay. we're reading Avengers, New Avengers, Infinity, and um, Original Sin, and then we'll read Secret Wars. And it'll come together really nice, I think. Um, maybe even so, we're like, we're, after, I mean, after reading Original Sin, you might want to read Thor's books. And figure out what happens to Thor. What does he do to get his hammer back, and all that kind of stuff. So maybe one day we'll read those things. You don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I have all that much left because I feel like by the time we talk next, we're going to get a conclusion of this story. And I also mm -hmm. think we're also starting Infinity, so we're going to have a nice uh, roundabout look at things as things come together and then... well, we can tangent over and talk about she hulk if you want i'm cool with that yeah um so i know we mentioned earlier when we were off mic that like maybe it wasn't the best episode um you guys yeah i wasn't a fan of this one yeah no it wasn't great i mean it was it was funny but it at some aspects but it was it was not the best episode i think the only reason I'm okay with the episode happening was because of the joke they made about weddings being completely inconvenient. That's why <laughs> yeah. they, I was just like, that, that was a good fourth wall. I enjoyed that. I mean, it is nice to see uh, a little bit more action from her, you know, instead of just these the goofy court, courtroom bullcrap. Mm -hmm. Which I know that's what the show is supposed to be, but it was nice to see her show off a little bit of strength again, like in the first episode. But I hope we see more of that as the th the last three episodes come, because like she's got to wear her super suit, right? At some point. Yeah, we yeah. haven't seen the super suit yet, and we haven't Same. seen Daredevil yet either. So there's got to be some interaction coming. That's gonna. Hey, here's to hoping for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. I mean, we got the tease of it, but I hope that's he's not enough for me. <laughs> It'd be great if he's in the last three episodes. That'd be so great. Yeah. Is that how many we have left? I think so. I think last week was six. I think there's only nine. I would. I wouldn't mind an episode where 
another episode where she's getting sued or something like that happens and Murdoch has to represent her. That I think would be pretty funny. That'd be pretty cool. I'd be into that. See him in the courtroom. Excited to find out why he's even in L.A. as well. You know, like, I hope they give us some kind of um, backstory into that, you know? Because, I mean, from my knowledge, he's the defender of Hell's Kitchen, you know? So he's usually over in New York. Right. Like, why why are you you over in L.A.? Mm, yeah. That is a good point. Now, maybe he's just there getting his new suit, and this whole aspect of the show is just about that, but who knows? Possibly. Yeah, because if they were to go off of the explanation of, oh, he got the new suit and he's going to test it out for a little bit, fighting some crime, like I'd buy that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can totally see that. Um in the trailers, we see a little bit of him as Matt Murdock, too. So, like, I'm hoping there's just a good portion. Like, he reveals his identity. Maybe he won't reveal his identity to She-Hulk, but maybe he will. I don't know. Maybe he has to be represented by She-Hulk. That'd be interesting. That'd be cool, too. Mm, so, that would be I would cool. also like to mention how excited I am for the news that we got t- today or yesterday. What was that? Yes. Hugh Jackman is coming back as Wolverine. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> and I am so fucking excited. Oh, I hope it's good. I I want a f- I don't want a cameo. I want him to be through the whole movie. I want to like yeah. a, almost like a buddy team up of Deadpool much and like, Wolverine. Much like Deadpool and Cable in the last movie. Yes, exactly like that. Yeah, exactly I think that would like be that. phenomenal. Did you both see the new video where they talk about, like, it's it's him and Ryan Reynolds sitting on the couch, and they're like, yeah, you guys have a lot of questions. We're going to answer yeah. them all. Uh-huh. Oh, our movie's about – immediately cuts the song, and they're just mocking, beating the shit out of each other. Uh-huh. Yeah. I really so awesome. enjoyed that. They're honestly so marketing geniuses. It's great. <laughs> I will say, Hugh's looking old, though. He – he does, but like, not at the same time. Like, he looked good. What's he like in his mid fifties? Yeah, I mean, well, something like that for sure. They'll CGI him a little bit, you know. And oh, I'm he, sure they will. I yeah. just hope the CGI is not as bad as it is in She-Hulk. Like, I, I'm not impressed with how She-Hulk looks in that show. No, but I mean. <sighs> When you think about it, like, I don't think Hugh Jackman could look that bad because, like, honestly, you're, like, you're not making somebody a green CGI monster. You're making just a yeah. human look a little younger. Yeah. So. And it's just all they have to really do is make him look a little younger than the claws. Right. Yeah. Easy enough. Easy done. Um I have all these, like, all this stuff, like X-Men, <laughs> like, I want, I want Alpha Force, I want, God, could you imagine if they, n- not only do we get Wolverine, but then we get him in Alpha Force, I think that'd be so cool. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> what I'm really surprised at is that I know that he said he was done doing it forever. If he is coming back, I would like to know at some point what... Ryan Reynolds and Kevin Foggy did to get him to come back. It's the right story. It's the right story. I, I'm, I'm honest to God, I think Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. are coming back also at one point. I just can't. It. Everybody's coming back. Let's see. You know, we got Toby. We got Andrew. We got Hugh. We got Sir Patrick. They're all coming back, man. I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm convinced. I, I would like a scene in this new Deadpool movie where he just goes, who did you have to suck to come back here? Kevin Feige. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd be into that. I really hope we get some, some new X-Men content soon. And I hope they do it right. Because that's always been my wheelhouse as far as the comics go. Um, X-Men? Yeah. So I'm I'm really excited for that aspect of what's coming, but from what as long I know, as they do it right. 
from from what I know, Al, is there is a stipulation on the actors for Fox X Men, their contracts until okay. like 2024 or 2025, they can't be recasted for whatever oh, wow. reason. Yeah, really. Uh huh. So that's why they're waiting because they want to cast their own X Men, and they right. can't do it until then. So that's why you see characters like Professor Xavier is still Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman's coming back to play Wolverine and like they're still within contract so they okay. can they can use them. Because um, like let's be honest, nobody wants to see Sophie Turner play Jean Grey again. Like no. you know, I love you Sansa Stark, but we're not we're done with you're not a good gene. Like, let's just be honest. No, and I wasn't real keen on the uh, the casting of um, Cyclops either. I, I thought that was a, a poor casting. Yeah, yeah, but it, given time, we'll get it. They just have to, you know, it'll just be a way to stretch it out even more, bring different stories and different characters in. I'm still waiting on that Gambit movie, but, you know, That's I'm not, not happening. thrilled about that. <laughs> That casting either that they were well, talking about. So I think, I'm okay with the waiting on that. I think once Disney like bought that was thrown to the wind. Like we're not yeah. kidding. Yeah. No. Which I'm uh, perfectly fine with. I just want to see him in content. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh let's uh let's wrap up here. We'll get Zach back on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds um, good. But then we can continue our conversation. Sorry folks, you'll you you will not be hearing our our comic book conversation after this. But, uh... <laughs> and next week we're on a break. We are. Um, so we're, we're going to break next week. By the time I upload this, it'll, you won't even notice, honestly. Um, but uh, next time we get together, um, we will be reviewing six issues. Um, dun, dun, dun. We're going Avengers 15, 16, and 17. So this is definitely closing out this storyline. And then we're doing Infinity number one, New Avengers 8, and Avengers 18. So that'll be a nice, like I said, close out this story, start Infinity, and it, it'll feel fresh, but also a continuation, which will be nice. That will be. All right. Uh, well, I want to thank everybody for listening. And, of course, uh, if you enjoyed, please subscribe, like, comment, interact with us. Uh, I'm Ian. I'm Al. I'm Shane. And this was Comic Book Wednesdays. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good night.